Some people are on their feet all day working in shops and stuff, and you're whinging because you've got a giggle got away, he's going to cry. Excuse me, for your feature, all you do is read out bad jokes from other people. Yes, but at least I come prepared. I can't. I have to punch you in the face. Hello and welcome to our weekend release. This is the bonus podcast episode from Help I Sex to My Boss, where we can see how much extra content we can squeeze into your week. It's random things that have been sent in, extra bits from our week and how our advice went down with you. Our G and Divas, you went for a massage yesterday. I did, yes. After all that book signing, mm. I needed I needed some tension release. Now, I am not a massage person. Some people either love them, others hate them. I detest massages. <gasps> Never really had one in my life. I think I had one and hated it. But I felt I needed one. Apparently, I've got a very knotty back. Oh, mm. it's the stress. Yes. It's all the executive tension that I carry in me. Well, anyway, I mean, I had it done. I mean, I hated absolutely every second of it, but I, my back did feel better at the end. I had one recently, mm. and I'm, I, I've only ever had... I think this will be my second or third, and it, I would highly recommend it, but I like a firm massage. A, a deep tissue? Yeah, so at one point she had her elbow dug in. She was, like, digging her elbow in, and it's great. Mm. And you're like, mm. I fell asleep as well. I was snoring at one point. And then at the How end could of, you fall asleep? At the end of it, it was when I was in Devon a couple of weeks okay. ago. Okay. And at the end of it, it's, and they're like playing like whale music and <laughs> she had like this steam coming in at the end of it. She, I was steam? Like, it's like this little mist thing just to set the ambience. And at the end, it was really mm. nice. She went, all right, my love. Now we're done. Uh, I'm just going to pop out the room and um, I'll be back in a minute. And I was like, oh, she was great. It's really nice. Good. Lovely. Yeah. How long was yours? An hour. Oh, no, I only meant, had 30 minutes. It was meant to be an hour and a half, but I was like, I'll probably... You finished early. I'd, yeah, story of my life. <laughs> so I thought an hour would be fine. Yeah. Good. Well, um, obviously this is our Friday bonus, but when we come back next week on our Tuesday, we've never done this before. I'm slightly dreading it, but it's going to be fine. We're going to do a Halloween-themed episode. Oh. <laughs> okay. I can't stand Halloween. I think I'd rather have a four-hour massage than do about one minute of Halloween. But we've done we've, Halloween episodes before, I'm not, sure. Not where we've dressed up, Jordan. Oh. But we are dressing up in a, in a very familiar but a very different way. Okay. Okay? Right. So okay. we'll see how that goes out. I think I've got the easier ride, as it were. Oh. Okay. I think you've got it harder than me. Oh, I'm but intrigued. we'll... Find so out on Tuesday. any little kids knock on your door at Halloween, you won't give them any sweets? No, taser them. You can't taser children. We've talked about this. Well, don't knock on my door. Did you never go trick-or-treat with your mum and dad on No, Halloween? because we lived in the country. There was nobody around yeah, us. Yeah, but they could have took you to a local estate. No. No? No. 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 They didn't. I took my nephews once around Burnley. It was class. I'm sure it was. Yeah, it's what, what's the sort of what's the going rate in Burnley? What do, what do you give the kids? Sweets, like preferably a wrapper. Or? You can give them a pack of Haribo. You just get loads of sweets in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if they give you a digestive biscuit, you just egg the house. Miles of pan fruit. No. No. I did get once a French fancy, and did I thought you? that was good. They were giving out French fancies. Oh, I'm suddenly in the mood for a French fancy. Mm. Pink, pink, yellow, or uh, brown. Ooh, I'm going to go for the yellow. Oh, okay, I'll have the pink one. Yeah. What's the brown one? Chocolate. Chocolate. Oh. Mm. What's the pink one? Strawberry. What's the yellow one? <laughs> lemon. I mean, you don't need to... Oh, no, I won't have the lemon one. You don't oh, need to be Alan Turing to crack that code. No, I don't like lemon. I'll go for the pink one. Okay. Strawberry or brown. Lovely. Okay. Um, okay, well, I think, Jordan, so exciting. I really want a French sandy. sandy French, French sandy? French fun, fancy. <laughs> it's time for another Etiquette Explained. Whee! Oh, is it me? Yes. Now, as you know from social media, William has gone viral uh, because of his etiquette tip videos. So, on our bonus, we'd like to pick one of the videos that William's posted and then we get him to elaborate a bit on it. This week, we went with your iced coffee etiquette video. Yes. Very fitting at this time of year. Yeah, you're probably not drinking iced coffee at this time of year anymore. But when I posted it a couple of weeks ago, it was probably just on the cusp. I was very into iced coffee this summer. It's good. It's very refreshing. Yeah, I've never it? had it before. Do you have it black or with milk? Without milk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, was, I used to get them every day on the way into work. Did you? Well, I hope you drank them politely. Okay. Um, now, here is the audio of my uh, tip. I think it's up to 7 million views. Quite a low performing one. 
uh, on social media. Here's the audio. Drinks with a straw like this are bound to annoy your co-workers when there are a few droplets left. We don't want to hear any of this. Awful. Instead, this is where you ditch the straw, lay it down on a tissue to one side, and drink from the cup. I swear you make this shit up as you go along. <laughs> well, there is an element of that, but that, that, is, that is correct etiquette. Because, look, again, you, you work in an office. I don't really work in an office. So when I'm working, not here, I'm at my own desk. But it would be terribly irritating to hit... <laughs> Imagine if everyone in the office was doing that. So you're saying take the straw out? Have the straw to begin with when it is full of coffee, iced tea, whatever you're having. doesn't matter if it's not coffee or tea. But then when it comes to those last few dregs, down it, not use a straw. Yeah, but it's better out the straw. That's fine. What about a just... milkshake? Because you can't really slurp it. You've got to slurp I a milkshake. St- same, same thing applies. Mm. Use the straw for most of it. Bring the boys to the yard. Take the straw out. Down the rest of it. I've not had a milkshake for years. I, f- I used to get a milkshake at McDonald's, and then when you find out how many strawberry, chocolate, or lemon. Strawberry. Mm. It's always strawberry. And when you find out how many calories are in a milkshake, oh, is it bad? It's fine when you're 19, 20. I mean, it, if you're listening to this, and you don't matter how old you are, you live your life. But yeah, I think the milkshake's pretty much the same as the burger, isn't it, or more? Yeah. But okay. Bloody good. Do you, do you have any, obviously, when you go into work, it's an office environment. Are there any sort of bad habits that other people do that annoy you, whether it's drinking from straws or not? I don't know how people can work in open plan offices. I'm very glad I don't have to work in Would one. that do you ready? Absolutely do my head. Like, See, stop get, talking to me. Mm, a lot of people say now they get more work done when they're at home, because obviously in the office you get stopped and stuff. Yeah, and people chat yeah. and, oh, they want to be that's, a friend. That's part of the office environment. Well, it shouldn't be. Should be single offices or maybe sharing two people. I'm like just used, used to it. What? In an actual room? Yeah. How it used to be. Is it? They're all open. I've only ever known an open plan office. I mean, I don't mind if you want to have glass walls. That's fine. I think it's better for all sorts of reasons to f- have visibility. Do you? But I don't want to hear what's going on over there. But that's all part of office gossip. Like when Mikey and I have to work from home together and he, we have separate desks, thankfully, but not separate offices. Just we use, as you know, second bedroom. Uh, as our study, like if he starts talking to me or puts music on, I, I can't hit the roof. I remember an old job. She'd keep us up to date on her. I think it was a husband's. He had a boil on his douchebag. On wh- what? What? On his the bit between your arse and your balls. The bit gooch. You, gooch. gooch. <laughs> What's the douchebag? I, and I have That's no what idea. Kelly Osborne used to call it, you douchebag. Anyway, so on his gooch. She used to keep us up to date on that. Sometimes you're not. And, and there in one little uh, anecdote is the reason why you should have glass offices. Okay. Um, anyway, let's go on to the listeners' responses. This is from Hayley from Cornwall. Another opportunity for you to do your Southwest accent. You are. Good afternoon, boys. I have a question for William. Oh. Why is a wake called a wake? As it's clear the person whose wake it is isn't going to wake up. Hayley in Cornwall. Excellent question. That's excellent. I don't know off the top of my head, but I will do that for an etymology. I'll research it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do that next week for next week's etymology. Well, I don't know when I'll do it. I'll put it in the system. I've already got Earl Grey to do as well. Well, all right. But I'll do it at some point. People people do 14-hour days digging up roads, and you're whinging because you've got a Google why awake's called awake. (laughs) Come on. Excuse me. Get get real. Some people are on their feet all day working in shops and stuff, and you're whinging because you've got a giggle while awake. It's not real crazy. Excuse me, for your feature, all you do is read out bad jokes from other people. Yes, but at least I come prepared. I can't. I'm going to punch you in the face. This is from Jean. Hi, William and Jordan. After I heard William laughing at Jordan talking about poor Frank the dog, I had to write in with my inappropriate laughing moment. I giggled away at my grandmother's funeral as the vicar had a microphone on him during the hymns and he was the worst singer ever. (laughs) My shoulders were bouncing up and down trying to contain my giggles and a lady behind me placed her hand on my shoulder and whispered, we all miss her too. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Jean. Yes, there is something about funerals that are quite funny Mm. because you're not meant to laugh. My cousin got me some tissues. I was crying at my grandma's funeral. She, as she pulled out a tissue, she pulled out a pair of knickers in her handbag. 
<laughs> we just laugh. Yeah, and I, I think, yeah, I think for a lot of people, laughing is the is the tonic that they need to cope with grief. And my cousin, I'll never forget this time, the best jokes I've heard at my granddad's funeral, our Paul, said, you about the jelly baby that went to the doctor's with an STI? Shagging all sorts. <laughs> you see, that's a joke that would have worked nicely. Told me that at my granddad's funeral before we went in. I was about 12 as well. So I was getting daggers from my family. I didn't laugh. No. I cried. Um, and this is from Andrew. Hi, William, John, and EPB. On a recent episode during William's etymology about the word posh, Jordan brought up the history of why we Aussies call the English poms. While the Prisoner of Mother England story is a widely held belief, it, like the port-out starboard home reason for the term posh, is not supported by evidence. The more likely source of the term is believed to be that when new immigrants arrived from England, because of the heat they became flushed, they had rosy cheeks, and were referred to as pomegranates, which was later shortened to pommes and subsequently poms. Pomegranates obviously being that very red colour. All the best, Andrew. I hope it was prisoner of mother england well yeah. andrew is saying there is like posh there is no historical evidence to back that up but there is obviously historical evidence to back up pomegranates oh is there yes andrew obviously researched that in great detail like i do rather than googling for william's etymology do you go to your etiquette books and Yes, and I, I fact check, I verify. So which etiquette book was... I consult a team of professionals. Which etiquette book was the iced coffee problem in? Uh, it's in Michael Myers' Etiquette Made Easy. And you weren't expecting me to say one. Michael Myers? No. <laughs> Mike, Micah, my colleague Micah. Oh. It's in hers, I think. Or maybe it's in the blue one of hers. But anyway, it is in a book. Mike Myers off of Shrek. No, <laughs> Micah. Does an etiquette book. No. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. That'll do, Jordan. What's your favourite Mike Myers film? I don't, I've never... I, well, other than Sh- Shrek. You've never seen Shrek? What else has he done? Wayne's World? No, never seen it. Uh, Austin Powers? Never seen it. Get away. Never seen right, it. Right, we're going to do an Austin Powers night one night. We're not. You've I'd never... rather watch Gavin and Stacey. You've never You've never seen Austin Powers? No. I've seen them all. They were my favourite films as a kid. That says so much. Do you... You've never seen no. Austin... They were so funny. I don't Star. even think I've seen a clip. No. That got gaga maga. You know, the... Hmm? The, the, having a stroke? The, there's, a, there's, a, there's a character in it called... This is how much I love it. There's a, char- oh, There's a character in Austin Powers called Fat Bastard. Right. <laughs> Have you not never seen it? I saw it a long time ago. It's so funny. Even Stink would see that that stinks. No? No. Okay. Are you, have you watched them recently? Mm. Are you actually going to watch them back and go, mm, I think my level of humour has... Risen up to the sophistication of Gavin and Stacey. Minimi, stop humping the laser. <laughs> You've never seen them. Right, start the car. Doctor Evil. Oh, I've heard of Doctor Evil. And there's fair. what was the body on it? Who spoke like that? His skin used to peel, and he used to pull his skin off and eat it, and go, "Oh, I'll shave that for later." Where's your fascia? Your fascia. Well, it sounds absolutely hilarious. It's really good. Probably, I, I haven't seen it for a while, so if it's really problematic, Gene Davis, it's don't, probably like, hugely you, problematic. Please don't come at me because I've probably haven't seen it for about twenty years. Right. So. Well, that gives us something to do. Uh, remember, if you've got a question or story that isn't a dilemma or problem, this is the place where we can read it out. So drop into our DMs on social media or send us an email to help at sexandmyboss dot com with anything that you want to share with us. We also love hearing back from the people we offer advice to. So if that's you. Get back in touch with producer Ben. Beyonce's in one of them. Sorry? Beyonce's in one of the uh, Austin oh, Powers films. Right. Mm. For more sex and news and nonsense, sign up for producer Ben's newsletter via sexandmyboss.com. Mm-hmm.